Okay, I was just watching a video about uh, Hebrews chapter 6 and the warnings about falling away. And, uh, he, and this guy was quoting Hebrews 6, verse 4 through 6. So let me read it real quick. It is impossible for those who have once been enlightened, who have tasted the heavenly gift, who have shared in the Holy Spirit, who have tasted the goodness of the word of God and the powers of the coming age and who have fallen away to be brought back to repentance to their loss they are crucifying the son of God all over again and subjecting him to public disgrace all right so he was teaching this and saying he was one of those once saved always saved guys and he completely manipulated the scriptures he says all this manner of balderdash. Well, while I'm watching this, the Lord spoke to me and said, He's fallen away. The guy who was teaching that you can't fall away. And here's what the Lord told me. He gave me this scripture too. By this gospel, you are saved. If you hold firmly to the word I preach to you, otherwise you have believed in vain. He's no longer holding firmly to the word that's preached. In other words, people who manipulate the scriptures, they're not holding firmly to the word that was preached. They've already fallen away and they cannot repent of their false teaching. Okay, and I'll give you another uh, verse. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 verse 10 They perish because they refuse to love the truth and so be saved For this reason God sends them a powerful delusion so that they will believe a lie And so that all will be condemned who have not believed the truth but have delighted in wickedness People who take scriptures Clear verses of scriptures And manipulate them to serve their own means means that they have already fallen away from their faith and can no longer repent. They have, uh, by this gospel you are saved, if you hold firmly to the word that I have preached to you, otherwise you have believed in vain. They didn't hold firmly to the truth that was preached, and they loved not the truth, yet delighted in wickedness, so God hands them over to a powerful delusion. So here's what the Lord was telling me. In my life, there was a time when the Lord spoke to me and told me to give up surfing. It's an idol in my life. I remember one day refusing to give it up and being out in the, in the water and I was getting pounded by the waves. Every time I found a, 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 a spot where the waves were breaking, I'd paddle over there and the waves would stop breaking and I'd look back to where I was and the waves were breaking where I was. And then I'd paddle back over there after like waiting like a half an hour for a wave. And then finally I'd paddle to the other side where the waves are breaking. And they'd stop breaking over there. I'd look over and they're breaking over there. And then I remember I got pounded by the waves. Big sets came in. People were jumping. Anytime I'd catch a wave, somebody would cut me off. I mean, it was just... And then I remember getting mad at God. And it was when I got mad at God that I realized, okay, I got to give up. I got a oh I I knew God had been telling me to give up surfing. Now imagine now now I gave it up. Now imagine if I had said, oh, "I'm not giving up surfing." Guess what? That's an idol. That is a violation of the top number 1 commandment to love the Lord your God. That is not no longer would you be abiding uh John chapter 15 where it talks about um if you abide in me and my word abide in you, and it talks about any branch that bears fruit, God prunes it. But if it doesn't bear fruit, God cuts it off. At that point, when people, in other words, every single person who teaches once saved, always saved, they once were called of God. But when God touched their idol in their life, and that's one thing I learned as a prophet, whenever you touch someone's idol, they will hate you with a passion. And I've been called of God. I remember I went to a church and the Lord told me to speak against them and to reveal that the idol in their heart was the NFL. Another pastor, the idol in his heart was, was the love of money. 
And every time I spoke these prophecies, they would hate me. Instead of repenting of the love of money, instead of repenting and laying down the idol of the NFL, they would just persecute me in the church and isolate me out of the church. And that's why every single person who teaches once saved, always saved, and manipulates 1 Corinthians chapter 15, where they uh, say once saved, always saved, but where it clearly says, if you hold to the word that I preached to you, otherwise you believed in vain. It's clear that you can believe in vain. Matthew chapter 7 verse 21 where it says, Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven. Only the one who does the will of my Father. And then he says, I will say, depart from me, you evildoer. I heard somebody teach on that. And they said, the reason they were condemned is because they weren't, weren't a believer. It doesn't say that. It says, Jesus said, depart from me, you evildoer. They were condemned for being an evildoer, not for unbelief. Anyway, uh, I've seen people teach. Uh, er so everybody who, who, who manipulates the scripture like that. So what I'm saying is all the people who hold to a pre-tribulation rapture, they're going to be proven because it's not going to be a pre-tribulation rapture. And we're in the end of the age. We literally have like maybe a year and a half max. I, and I mean like actually less than a year before everyone will know that we, that it is not a pre-tribulation rapture. And at that time when the mark of the beast comes out and the rapture is still yet to come, that's when a bunch of people are really going to full on manifest the actual manifestation that they they actually rebelled a long time ago and they're unable to repent and it's God who hands them over to a powerful delusion. That's why you can take the scriptures and you can go to these people like like Tim Henderson or Greg Jackson or the guy I just watched who was teaching on Hebrews chapter 6 and you can show them Matthew chapter 7 verse 21 and no no let me explain that away to you let me explain it away and you can show them uh uh first Corinthians chapter 15 by this gospel you are saved if you hold firmly to the word I preached to you. Otherwise, you've believed in vain. Paul making it clear that it's possible to believe in vain. Oh, no, no, sonny boy. Let me explain that away. Let me explain it away. And the reason they have to explain it away is because those very verses are for them. A long time ago, the Lord touched their idol and they refused to repent of their idolatry. And so as they started to fight against God, God decided I can either fight against you and 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 destroy you and you're still going to just be angry at me so he says I'll just hand you over to a delusion that's why there's no point in trying to argue and trying to persuade them what you need to be doing is trying to find those people who have not yet rebelled and persuade them to obey and that's why their teaching is so dangerous is because that it's a it's a dividing line when somebody's in that place where God is touching their idol and they either have to break that alabaster bottle and leave it at the feet of Jesus or hold on to it and walk away and, and withhold it from the Lord. No, you can't have my alabaster bottle. It's mine. Don't touch it. And that's what they do. And that's almost happened to me. I'm not going to give up surfing. I'm not going to have to give up surfing. That's not a sin. But... If I hadn't given it up, I'd be living by the coast right now. I'd have a surfboard on top of my vehicle right now, bunch of wetsuits. I'd be looking at the surf report right now, trying to see if it's going to, are they going to, what's the swell look like? Is it going to be a north swell? Is it going to be a south swell? Oh, it's going to, oh, it's going to be good tomorrow. Or, oh man, ain't going to be no waves. Lord, please let there be some waves. I'm just saying. No, but instead, I laid it down. I got out of there. I left town. I don't even live by the coast, you know. And so what happens, let's say I had. Let's say I had continued to surf and also tried to continue to, one, I'd be lukewarm. Two, I, when I read the scriptures where it talks about all the conviction of being able to fall away, I wouldn't be able to handle it. And so I'd have to manipulate the scriptures to... In order for my own heart to have any peace. So God would have to hand me over to a powerful delusion. So that I would be manipulating the scriptures just like they do. 
And I'd and then I'd hear someone like Greg Jackson teach that you can't lose your salvation the moment you believe and all this. I'd be like, yeah, yeah, I like that teaching. And I'd turn aside to follow that teaching. The once saved, always saved. When it's not true. And here's how you know it's not true. When it turns out to not be... And all these same people, they one, they believe in once saved, always saved. Two, some of them believe that God doesn't even speak today, which means God spoke to them and they got to a point where they were tormented by God speaking to them and they just said, no, God doesn't speak today. God doesn't speak today. So that now they can manipulate the, the scriptures all they want. They never have to listen to the voice of the Lord because after all, God doesn't speak today. If God tries to give them a warning dream, they just rebuke it and say that's of the devil because God doesn't speak today and God doesn't do that. Others still believe in dreams, but they always misinterpret the dream. If God is trying to warn them, they... I mean, I've seen people give clear dreams that clearly make it clear that it's not a pre-tribulation rapture. And they talk about how this dream uh, happened after the rapture. So they always place it... In other words, they miss they misinterpret their own dreams. So what I'm saying is everybody who believes in once saved, always saved has to manipulate a bunch of verses of scripture. And everyone who believes in a pre-tribulation rapture has to manipulate a bunch of verses of scripture. And why are they doing that? Because they love not the truth yet delighted in wickedness. And so God handed them over to a powerful delusion. And there's no point in trying to get them to repent because they cannot be brought back to repentance. And they are no longer holding to the word that was preached to them. So they, therefore they have believed in vain. So it's a waste, waste of time to try to persuade, like trying to persuade Greg Jackson that no, you can lose your salvation and you need to repent. He can't be brought back to repentance. And when you, you put the scriptures right in his very face. And he, no, no. And then he'll turn around and accuse you of not being saved. And living by works. And when really it's a labor of love. It's laying up treasures in heaven. You, listen. I'm just saying they, they don't understand laying up treasures in heaven. Because a long time ago that their treasures were on this earth. Just like if I continued to go surfing. That would be my treasure in this world. When the rapture happens, I'd be starting to go up. I'd be taken up. And as soon as I get about 100 feet up off the ground, or 1,000 feet up off the ground, I'd be like, wait a minute, surfing, surf report said this is going to be the best day of the year for surfing. And then I look back, and boom, God's going to drop me. <laughs> I'm just saying, that's how it's going to happen. Other people, they're going to be on their way up. Oh, wait, I forgot to feed Fluffy. And boom, God's going to say, go, go feed your dog. Some people are going to be on their way up. Oh, but I just bought me a brand new pair of golf clubs. Boom, dropped. Some people are going to be on their way up. Oh, Lord, I just purchased a new yoke of oxen. I need to go try them out. And there's a parable about that, about people who were invited to the wedding banquet. They were not worthy to go. And they started giving all excuses why they couldn't go. There's a guy who was in the wedding hall of the wedding banquet and the king comes in and says why don't you have wedding clothes and he says time he tells the servant time hand and foot and throw them out where there's weeping and gnashing of teeth how's that for once saved always saved there's so many verses that contradict the once saved always saved that you have to be convoluted and handed over to a powerful delusion for you to actually believe it and therefore you're unable to repent because that powerful delusion overpowers your mind. And instead of repenting, you just accuse anybody who's teaching you the truth. You say, you're the one who's fallen away. And that's what, that's what I hear Greg Jackson doing. They say, oh, you don't hold to the true gospel. The true gospel is that the moment you believe, you're already in heaven for eternity. <laughs> And by the way, it's a pre-tribulation rapture and all those verses where it talks about when persecution comes, they fall away. Oh, throw that all out. But we're going to find out because the Bible says God's going to rebuke them and prove them to be liars, especially those who teach a pre-tribulation rapture and those who teach once saved, always saved. They're all going to end up falling away and taking the mark of the beast. And then they're going to find themselves talking to each other, telling each other, oh, it's not the mark of the beast. Or you can take the mark of the beast and still be saved because they've all taken the mark of the beast I'm just saying there it's gonna happen the great falling away and the Antichrist is revealed before the rapture before the rapture you will be handed over to be persecuted and put to death at that time many will turn away from the faith and all those people 
when they take the mark of the beast, they're also going to hate and betray anyone who refused to take the mark of the beast because by refusing the mark of the beast and standing firm in your faith, you, you condemn them. By obeying God, when I gave up surfing, in a sense, I condemned anyone else out there who is also a surfer and God convicted them and said it's an idol in your heart. Any of that whole church where they worship the NFL, when I gave up, when I walked away and said, I don't even need to watch the football game. I convicted them and condemned them, proving that it's not an idol in my heart and you are able to overcome these things. And so that's why when persecution breaks out, those who stand firm in their faith and, re and refuse the mark of the beast, all the Christians who teach a pre-tribulation rapture are going to hate and betray you. And the more you stand firm in your faith, the more and the more you hold to the word that was preached to you, the more they're going to hate you for it. Because you prove that it is possible to be... Uh, to stand firm in your faith and to not be handed over to a powerful delusion by obedience and serving God. And obedience is never dead works, but they'll tell you it is. Uh, laying up treasures in heaven is never dead works, but they'll tell you, oh, you're just basing your salvation on when really it's just a labor of love. You're not basing your salvation on that. But I can say that if I had continued to hold to an idol, you lose your salvation. Anybody who holds to idols, holds to false teaching, holds to idols, you're gonna, they're going to be condemned. And there's nothing you can do. And many of them have already come to know the Lord, tasted of the heavenly realms, and yet rebelled from God. And so God hands them over to a powerful delusion, and therefore they can no longer be brought to repentance. And therefore they're going to live in their little la-la land up until the mark of the beast comes out. I'm just saying.